I wonder if you've ever really been thirsty. I wonder how long you've ever really gone without having a drink. Um, might be that you ate Chinese food late at night and you wake up in the middle of the night with that terrible thirst. Or you're stuck on the motorway in a traffic jam and you haven't got anything in your car. You're scraping around, but you haven't got anything. I don't think we really have any um, concept of what it's like to be without water. We just see it as a free commodity, although actually it's not free, is it? But we see it as something that we just turn the tap on and we get. But in that um, film, there was a few things that they said. They said water affects everything. They said that time spent gathering water could be dangerous and that that water could bring disease and germs. And what they said at the end was, water restores a person's life. It gives them opportunity and it gives them freedom. Imagine something as simple as water being able to restore a person's life and give them opportunity and freedom. It says at the end, water changes everything. Water is a powerful thing, isn't it? It can just be as simple as a, a clear liquid in a glass, of, a glass, and it can be quite non-threatening. It can be such a simple thing. But water on the other scale can be dangerous. It can be out of control, and it can mean a difference between life and death. People are killed by water, not only contaminated water, but people have floods, people are, they drown. Water can be a very powerful element. Tsunami, yeah? Yeah? See, I wouldn't have known that was by water, but that's why I have you, Jason. <laughs> but water is a powerful thing, and I want us to think about water. If you look in John 7, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible in 38 39, it says this, He who believes in me, who cleaves to and trusts in and relies on me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being shall flow continuously springs and rivers of living water. But he was speaking here of the Spirit, whom those who believed, trusted, had faith in, in him, were afterwards to receive. For the Holy Spirit had not yet been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. We're a week before Pentecost. Next week it is Pentecost, but we talk about water as a spirit that gives us life. Jesus talks about water not in a concept of a drink that keeps our body alive, but as something that waters our soul, that nurtures us and gives us life. And we can do the same. We can see faith two ways. We can either see faith as something to analyze, something to get lots of facts on, something to um, ponder and to question. Or we can see faith as something that is a true engagement with God, something that feeds our spirit, something that actually changes us from the inside, actually something that gives us life in a different and a new way. It, it, it's very different, the two sides of faith. A lot of people will see faith as a very factual thing, something that you research and you analyze. But faith is so much more than that. Faith is about letting this spirit of water feed our soul. If you're not doing that, if you're just taking all the theory, it's a bit like taking your driving theory test but never bothering to get into a car. It's not really a lot of point. In some ways, water can also be dangerous and so can our faith. If faith becomes contaminated, it can be like those germs getting into the water system. Jesus died on the cross so that we could have life, a free life, no tricks, no gimmicks, but it was a free gift. And people, maybe you even, find it really difficult to grasp the concept that anything's free. Even with those buy one, get one freeze, I think people think, well, they've probably put the price up of one, so the other one's not really free. You know, you, you get uh, offered these holidays on the telephone. Oh, you know, you, you've won a holiday, all this kind of thing. Nobody really believes that anything's free. And so we, we need to allow ourselves to believe that Jesus' love is a free gift. 
we need to allow ourselves to believe that it's free. Because if we can believe that, then that's when others can believe. As the song says, the best things in life are free. And Jesus paid the price. Jesus paid the ultimate price for us to have that free gift of freedom. Mayor Angelou, the poet, said, I learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you do. But people will never forget how they felt. People will forget what you said. They'll forget what you do. But they'll never forget how they felt. And what we do and say in the grand scheme of things is slightly pointless, isn't it? I don't think that many of us, I don't know that I've got anything to say that would change the world. But I know that if I can point people to Jesus, and if I can show them who Jesus really is, then that will really bring a change. That's when things really start to happen and make a difference. In John 4, Jesus says, anyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. This is when he's at the well. So if you drink this water, you'll be thirsty. And you know that if you get up in the middle of the night, you drink a load of water, and you go back up to bed, then you need the loo, then you potter downstairs again, and then you're thirsty again. You wake up in the morning with that heavy feeling in your mouth, and your tongue feels like it weighs a ton, and you're thirsty. But Jesus said, if you drink the water that I give, that kind of spiritual water, you'll never be thirsty again. It won't be that continual grasping and that, when am I going to get another drink? And that's difficult for us to understand because we're not in a country where water is something that we have to go and spend three hours a day going to get. You imagine if to wash your hair, Amy, you had to go six hours to get the water to do it. You imagine if you had to go for a drink and it took you all the day. But you have to do it. It's a life living necessity. But our faith can be and needs to be as easy and transparent as water. We know that our bodies need to be healthy. We know what we need to do to make our bodies healthy. Five fruit and vegetables a day. Don't eat too much carbohydrate after seven o'clock. Make sure you have protein. Eat lots of this, that, and the other. We know what we need to do to keep our bodies healthy. And we know that what we put, there's a lot of people laughing about the concept of five fruit and vegetables a day, I tell you. We know what we put in our bodies makes a difference to how we feel. I know that if I eat loads and loads of Chinese food, I'm going to wake up in the middle of the night feeling thirsty and feel a bit like this, you know. If you eat lots of healthy food, you feel like you've done something good. You feel like there's some benefit of it. And it's the same with our spiritual lives, isn't it? What we feed our spiritual life is just the same as what we feed our body. I've got this poster in my bathroom, and if you've sat on our toilet, you'll have read it. But if you haven't, then just bear with me. But I want to read it to you, and I want to see what sticks out to you. Simple ways to bless your day. Take joy in the gift of today. Count your blessings. Shine in the light of God's love. Forgive and forget. Grow gracefully. Seek simplicity. Obey with a cheerful heart. Stand and be counted. Be true to your beliefs. Encourage those around you. Invest your time in things that matter. Keep the faith. Fill your life with love. Share God's love. Be strong in the Lord. Pursue what is true. Fuel your faith. Listen with your heart. Delight in creation. Memorize the scriptures, celebrate God's promise, say your prayers, believe in miracles, and live the life. Now to you, one of those might have stuck out to you. Maybe five a day would stick out to you, I don't know. But the one that sticks out to me always, I used to uh, sort of have this very sort of over-spiritual game where I'd sit and look at it and see which one, and that must have been what God was talking to me about. But always it's the same one. Fuel your faith. Fuel your faith. We need to feed our souls. It's so important for who we are. It's important for us to look after our physical body well and to 
make sure that that's well cared for, but it's good for us to look after our souls. If we just give our soul a quick fix once a week, it's really difficult to get through. It's easy in times of crisis to get really stressed and just say, God, what in the heck are you doing? Do you ever say that? What are you doing? Why are things so last minute? Why has it always got to be right at the last second that you come in? Why did that happen? Why did that person say that to me? Why did I say that to that person? It's always the same. And at times like this, there's only one option. Reach for the custard creams. <laughs> or whatever sticking plaster you use, whatever your coping mechanism is. Mine's custard creams, and never one. It's always a packet, <laughs> as you can see. But it's a sticking plaster. It's a coping mechanism. It's something that we do to make ourselves feel better. But when I spend time thrashing things out with God, and I do say very often, God, what in the heck are you doing? What is this all about? But when I thrash things out with God, I wonder why I bothered with the custard creams, because it's so simple to feel that. And, and that's just about spending time, just spending a bit of time. And to water our faith, we've got to be close to the water. We've got to make sure that we go near the water. The thing is that with spiritual faith, it's not a matter of life and death whether we drink the water physically, but it is a matter of life and death to our soul. And we have to really grasp that, I think. The custard creams are just the comfy option. God is not too busy to listen to what you care about. God is not too busy to spend time with you. The Bible says that he never goes to sleep. He never slumbers and he counts the hairs on our head. Now, I tried to do this last night. Now, admittedly, I was watching Britain's Got Talent at the same time, but it's really hard. Has anyone ever done it? Count the whole hairs on your head? It is really difficult. Really difficult. Danielle, you're looking shocked, but it is difficult, I can tell you. But God wants to spend time with us. He wants to spend time with us. And what we absorb into our soul is really important. Who we spend our time with. We need to sleep well. We need to eat well. We need to guard our hearts. Guard them. Be careful what we do with them. Be careful of how we spend our time. God will not call you to anything that you can't cope with. That's always something that's said and people roll their eyes. But what it really means is God will not call you to anything that you can't cope with without him. Just like that footprints thing. God wants us to be so close to him, and he desires us to feed our souls. He desires us to spend time with him because it's good for us. If you've not read this book, it's called The Shack, and it is a work of fiction, and some people don't like it. But this book challenges how close God can be in this book, God's a big mama cooking in the kitchen. Come on, let's get in there. It's a closeness, and it makes people feel uncomfortable. But this is what he says. This is what they say. I want you... This is God speaking to the guy. I just want you to be with me and discover that our relationship is not about performance or you having to please me. I'm not a bully, not some self-centered, demanding little deity insisting on my own way. You cannot find that through guilt or condemnation or coercion, only through a relationship.